Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. December 13th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. about That's what the election was allegedly about so let's make believe i retired from radio just for a minute and i'm just walking around on a beach somewhere i wouldn't be a beach but wherever i retired to and i'm not doing that and i talk to her hey mike how are you weren't you once on the radio yeah yeah i'm him i don't do politics much anymore well what do you think about that uh, roy moore election i said well i don't do politics but what i think about it is this uh, what's your name joe it was about Christian values. What? What do you mean Christian values? I thought it was liberal versus conservative. No, no, no. Well, we hear that the African-American community down there voted against more. I said, that's because they're very conservative Christians. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't read that in the newspaper. Well, that's why I'm not in the radio anymore, because everything's such a lie, it's hard to talk to people. They don't know what to, what to believe anymore. Now, I'm giving an imaginary conversation to get your attention. You know, you talk about fake news. It's not so much fake news. It's stupid news. Even those who think they're telling you the truth don't know what the truth is. So how can you believe what they say? You're telling me that the little people in television uh, are going to tell you that this was a, about a repudiation of Moore because he was a hypocrite on Christian values? They don't even understand it. I do because I do. And I think it's a very keen insight. Now, the first hour I asked you in light of the Alabama election upset based on sex scandals, and it was all about sex, 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 sex obsessed nation. And we may be the most sex obsessed nation since God created mankind. And there's a reason for that, too. You cannot open a newspaper, a website, turn on a movie without being blasted with sexually provocative messaging. It's impossible. It's a madness. I'm not calling for censorship. I'm just an observer. So what? what's the answer to all of this? Men are not going to change. Their impulses are not going to go away because you want them to. Oh, my, he looked at me. Oh, my, he catcalled me. Oh, my, he said, let's have a date. It's not going to change. So what do you want men to do? Turn to prostitution? Because that's what they're going to do. And there'll be no dating and no marriages at all. Then who are you going to blame? Gloria Alred? So I don't know the answer to the question, other than maybe e Burkas may be the answer. Why do you think Islam, you know, the Burka, by the way, is not in the, in the Quran. That's an adaptation of the religion, the sociocultural aspects of the religion. It's not like in the holy book, where they say, a woman must wear that. It is not there. It does not say the woman should be covered in a tent. So this came about so that men wouldn't be tempted to look at women and particularly at other men's wives that was the whole reason you know i i'm i'm i don't care whether you like what i'm saying or not it is what it is that's what it is so as hemlines went up so to speak if you even remember what a hem was i don't think a hem no one knows what a hem is they had a hem and haw but as hemlines went up i i should finish the parable somehow but i'm a little tired right now i didn't have lunch yet as hemlines went up Something went down, or whatever. Morality went down, you could say that. So what's the answer to this? I don't have the answer for you. I have the questions, not the community. Community doesn't have the answers either. Oh, so the election's over. Roy Moore will go back to what he does, hanging around malls and stuff. You know, I mean, shopping for Christmas items, trolling the malls. In a few more years, if this keeps up, men will be elected. Uh, elected. <laughs> men will be arrested for thought crimes. I saw you. I know what you were thinking. I'm filing a police report against you. I know what you were thinking. You're undressing me with your eyes, you pig, you. Is that the next stage 
of the guillotine. And women, can I ask you a question? I know you're going to get angry at me, but I'm just going to ask it. I'm not blaming you. But when you go out and buy that special tight skirt and you buy those high heels and you put on that extra beautiful look, what is it for? Tell me what it's for. To attract other women or to attract men? And let's say you're single. What are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? Yourself? Have you thought about who you are dressing for? Isn't it to be attractive to who? Yourself. Many of you say, I'm doing it for myself. I like the way I look. It's not true, though. You're conditioned to attract the opposite sex. And that's what you're doing. And so what's going to happen when the opposite sex is intimidated to the point where they won't even respond to you? Then what? L.A. fires tied to the homeless. You didn't see that one, did it? Did it reach the East Coast? Bel Air, California wrestles with homeless crisis after encampment fire destroys multi-million dollar homes. Oh, they're wrestling with the crisis, all the good liberals who had them living in the woods and they set the woods on fire? But they won't accept the fact that they have to do something about the homeless issue, which is simple. Build work camps, give them the care that they need, and get them the heck off our streets. That's all. What else is in the news? The idiots in the L.A. Times, the Alabama Senate laws made Trump's job a lot harder. It's about repudiation of conservative values. Nothing to do with conservative values. Nothing whatsoever. It's no repudiation and no support for anything. It's a rejection of the hypocrisy of Judge Moore, who was a religious conservative who was allegedly trolling uh, malls for young girls when he was young. And they didn't want him in the, in, the, in the office. That's all it was. If anything, it was a support for Christian values, incidentally. But not a, not a hypocrisy. Not the, hypocritic, not the hypocritical support for Christian values. You hear? Eh, one man's opinion. Let's move on. That's all. Move on. Move on. What else is in the news? Let's see what else after you in the sound bin that may entertain the masses out there. I don't know. Archive stuff. How I sounded in 1996. Maybe one of those would be good. It's only a minute long. It's early in the show. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, it's six minutes long. Savage Archive uh, with no date. Thank you very much. Oh, 1994. Mammograms may increase cancer. I can't play it because it's six minutes long. Oh, Savage Archive, Meds for Depression, October 1994. Too long. Who put this together with six-minute slots here? You need like a minute, a minute and a half. Savage Archive, Smithsonian Changes World War II History, October 1994. Okay, let's hear how I sounded in 1994 on this little piece. Clip 02, Jim, fire away. I'm really angry at the Smithsonian Institution because what they tried to do, they tried to make the U.S. into the bad guy and Japan the good guy. They were going to feature the plane, the Enola Gay, which of course dropped the atomic bomb on Japan and that tragic conclusion to World War II in the Pacific. And there was a long-winded speech about, you know, written up that the, uh, the U.S. was the bad guy. I won't go into all the details. And they actually tried to revise history at the Smithsonian until a historian caught them. William Manchester, who teaches at Wesleyan University and is the author of a biography of General Douglas MacArthur, who commanded the Pacific forces during the war, said that the people at the Smithsonian made an initial low estimate of uh, how many people would have died if there was an invasion instead of the atomic bomb. He said that was preposterous, and he says it was part of an ideological campaign of those who wish to say the dropping of the bomb was unnecessary. So owing to uh, absolute outrage by uh, veterans groups, the Quislings at the Smithsonian Institution changed the exhibit to reflect a U.S. point of view. After all, it still is the United States. It's unbelievable. Before these uh, veterans groups got involved, there was only one paragraph about Pearl Harbor. Can you imagine that? And the earliest script on the exhibit at the Smithsonian uh, just made the Japanese into a pacifist people who were defending themselves. Now, I'm not here to j bash Japan, but good God. Do you know that they, a photograph showing Japanese prisoners of war was included with no photograph of American prisoners of war at the end of this exhibit? Well, that's been changed, too. And the reason I'm outraged is that this is an example of multiculturalism at work all through America's body politic and i know who the director of the smithsonian is i, I don't even think i'm going to mention him by name he's the former chairman the former chancellor of the university of california at berkeley in my opinion he brought pc to berkeley 
He now went on and was appointed to the Smithsonian. And by the way, to Al Gore's credit, Al Gore tried to block this man's appointment. I don't know what this guy's agenda is, but it's an outrage how these multiculturalists inveigle their way into every aspect of America and just continually try to make us look bad wherever they go. It's just astounding. That's, that's good stuff. I haven't changed at all. I've been at it a long time, and I've done a, a good job. I think that I have done a good job of holding America up on my back since 1994. I think that's a very good example, and I'm proud of myself listening to it. I didn't listen to it before the show. I asked the guys who work for me to go to my archives and find some stuff, and they found this on the Smithsonian. And it shows you that my job of alerting you to the issues of borders, language, and culture, which I've been doing for all these years, has not changed at all. I'm giving you one man's opinion, number one, and I think it's an analysis that's worth listening to, or I wouldn't be on the radio one more second. And that brings us back to my vitriol today towards the conservative blowhards who backed more, who are making believe today that they didn't. Covering up, backpedaling, saying they didn't back them, it's sickening. And they, they bring down the entire edifice when they do so. They have to admit they were wrong. They backed the wrong person. None of them are man enough to do it. No Siri Bob. That's the Savage Nation opening for our number two. The phone number is 855-400-7282. What's this about skirts getting higher? That I like. That's a good caller. The skirts get higher. 855-400-7282. This was all about skirts in Alabama. In light of the Alabama election upset based on sex scandals, that's all it was. It was not about liberal or conservative values. It was about sex scandal. And as I say, the voters in this very conservative Christian state said they don't want anyone in the office who is tainted with any such sex, sex scandal. It's that, that's what happened. I keep repeating it. That's the analysis. And actually, it was a support for Christian values, not a rejection. So don't start rushing to the wrong judgment because you'll wind up on the wrong end of history again. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Cartel is high, cartel goes low, cartel is high, cartel is low, one and all, the harder, the oh, am I back on the air? New York Post says Port Authority bomber tried brainwashing his wife. He's always innocent, though. Me? I didn't know anything about it. Well, yes, he came home with the writings of the uh, radical Muslim preacher, but I didn't listen to him. Yes, I did buy him the wires and the battery and the Christmas lights, but I thought he was going to put up a Christmas tree. I, I didn't know anything about it. Now we're learning. He pressured other family members to follow an ultra-conservative branch of Islam, according to the Dhaka Tribune. The wife knows nothing about it. You know, the wife of the bomber said she was surprised to find out what her husband did. How did I know? I bought the Christmas lights, the wires, the batteries. Ula had pressured the wife, uh, who remained in Bangladesh after they married last year, to pray regularly and wear a hijab, and had given her one of the militant leaders pamphlets to read according to the Daily Star. But the wife said he never mentioned radicalization or planning these types of activities. And you have to believe the wife, as you know. They had nothing to do with it. He was the only one. No one in the family knew anything about it. Talked to his wife before the explosion, but he didn't mention anything about the plan or what he was doing, according to her. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. The chain migration, Ula, has been here since 2011. And he went to Bangladesh in September to see his family spending most of the time with their six-month-old son. But she knows nothing about it. The relatives are under surveillance in Bangladesh, and um, none of them are radical. They're all peace-loving Muslims. None of them had any inkling that this man was uh, going to do a thing like this. Trust me on that. At least I trust what they say. I have no reason to doubt them. I love that his lawyer yesterday was Jewish. I, I thought that was amazing. How does that happen? How does a Muslim bomber get a Jewish lawyer who argues in such an absurd, absurd manner like that? It's like when the Nazis marched in Skokie, Illinois, many, many years ago 
The lawyer was a Jewish lawyer from New York who said they had every right to insult Jews and threaten their life. How does this happen? Where do the people lose their mind like this? I don't understand it. How do they come to these conclusions that they should defend the people who would kill them? I don't understand it. I can't, for the life of me, understand that. Can anyone explain it to me? Is there a liberal listening to this show who tells me how a Jewish lawyer can represent the Muslim bomber in, in the Port Authority bombing case with any sense of sanity? Tell me, tell me what that's based upon. I'm sure I'm going to get a call from one. There must be one in the, in the audience. There has to be always a psychotic in every audience who, uh, who will call 855-407-283. But we can go back to the big topic of the day, which is not the Port Authority bombing suspect, who made his first appearance today in the court. They dressed him up. You know how it is. They put him in an outfit. Uh, he says, yes, ma'am. They, they teach him pretty good, the lawyers. Covered by a white blanket with tubes. Oh, he appeared via a video feed from his bed in Bellevue. Isn't that great? He's getting better medical care than veterans who are dying in hallways in VA hospitals. He's in Bellevue Hospital. There are veterans that don't get this, this care. Covered with a white blanket with tubes sticking out of his right arm. And two attorneys by his side. Not one, but you're paying for two for the bomber. Ula stared into the camera with the glazed eyes. Poor man. But briefly turned his head away as Manhattan Federal Judge Catherine Parker read the charges against him. Have you seen a copy of the complaint, the judge asked. Yes, I do, he answered. Well, anyway, you get the picture. You know my feeling on these issues, and you know what I would do. You know, habeas corpus? Yeah, okay, I get it. Well, we're better than that. We're better than them. we got to prove to them. We don't have to prove nothing. Prove nothing. Not better than anybody. 855, what is this now? United Airlines stop girls in yoga pants from boarding a flight. Not interested. Porn star and suspected suicide. After, see, this is the problem with the New York Post. I read a serious article, then I get like sucked down into on the, around the web, and I'm reading stories about porn star, and, uh, yoga pants, Navy destroys and collisions had led training. Private island off Connecticut returns to the market asking 8.7 million dollars. MansionGlobal.com. Who would want to live on a private island off Connecticut? Is that like that romantic to you living in a horrible old Ichabod Crane house in the middle of Long Island Sound? What would be what's the object of that? Private island off Connecticut return. What was the what is the value of a house like that? If you don't like people, why would you even live in Connecticut? Why not move to Alaska with the geeks up there? I don't understand. Why would a private island in Connecticut? Why? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. So everyone's blaming Bannon now. Yeah, play the song, just staying alive. What's he going to do now? Representative King of New York said that Steve Bannon looks like a, quote, disheveled drunk who wandered onto the political stage. That's pretty harsh. Uh, Representative King looks like a... Let me figure it out before I say it. Why would he have to do a thing like that? It wasn't about Steve Bannon, King. You know that. It's stupid. What are you blaming him for? Blame Roy Moore. Roy Moore ran as a Christian conservative, Mr. King, Senator Rep. King. And the people there turned against him because they didn't want anyone tainted with any allegations about sexual improprieties to represent them. It's still a very conservative state. So for you to come up and say it was Bannon's fault is stupid. But then again, what do you expect from people in Congress? Yeah, that's why they're in Congress. If they were smarter than that, they'd be running a hedge fund or something along those lines. Are, are the hedge fund operators today the smartest people on earth? Would that be the... The highest you can go in the world if you're smart. I'm wondering. You don't really do anything for a living. What you do is you figure, I mean, you, you bet on stocks. It's like a gambler. A hedge fund operator is fundamentally a mathematical uh, gambler, a gambler, gambler who understands math and, and numerical trends. I guess you have to be pretty smart to do it. Or, or good insider information works. Good old insider information. Where's that show, The Billionaire? That was pretty good for a while. So, uh, Conyers is gone. Roy Moore is gone. You could say he's another one, another uh, guy who got hit with the sexual misconduct allegations. That did, took him down. No guy in Minnesota, the comedian Frankenstein, Frankenwine, gone. There's a long list. When, when does it end? 
Who's behind all of this? Who's pushing it? And what is the outcome of it all socio-politically? You know, politically we could see the outcome, but what about so socially what is this going to be for our society? Is it? I don't know the answer to that. Revealing dresses are going to be out. Women are going to start dressing more conservatively to not induce sexual uh, harassment. Don't say that women have nothing to do with it. I'm not going to buy that. You could say that you're blaming the victim. I didn't blame anybody. There's no one specific here. But if a woman is going to wear extremely revealing clothing and a man is going to respond because he's a man in some way, I don't mean touching or hurting her, but what, hello, you're nice, you want to have a date? Now that's considered a crime. That's considered sexual aggression or har harassment. This has to come, to, we have to come to some terms with this whole problem. And so, sociology is, sociologists are going to have to talk about it, and they will. But uh, this is going to this this whole situation is going to change American society in one way or another, and I don't know whether it's going to end up with burkas. I don't know how it's going to end up. Men are not changing. Men are encoded in their DNA to seek women. It's all that's all that's all it is. I don't care how much brainwashing you put into a boy. The boy, if he's normal, is going to look at girls. That's just the way he is when he becomes a certain age. Even if he lives in San Francisco, that might happen. You know that even a boy in San Francisco may look at a girl when he's 14. It's hard to believe. He may not want to experiment by putting on his mother's dresses and lipstick. He may actually still find girls attractive, even in Marin County. I know it's hard to believe, but it still will happen. So how is that going to change anything if a boy still looks at a girl? It's the nature of, of, of humanity in any society on earth. You want that changed now? It's not going to change. So something else has to change. Well, I don't have the answer to that other than the laws are all screwed up. I mean, what, what is sexual harassment, actually? Where does it begin and where does it end? What is sexual harassment? I, I was reading that if a man says, uh, let's go on a date now in an office, that's considered harassment. How is that possible? You look great. Let's go on a date. How is that harassment? Isn't that how relationships begin? which can move to marriage and family. Well, of course, now you understand why such issues are being considered harassment because there's an entire group in this country that are demonic and they want no man-woman relationships and they want no families. I know you don't believe any of this and it's too far ahead and I understand that, but there's a movement of Satanists in this country that do not want men and women to get together and have normal families. I don't think you understand that. Most of you don't. It goes well beyond what's in front of your eyes so i guess we can stick to this guy what is this this guy needs a lawyer who who needs a lawyer the caller or me i don't know what i don't know what the call screener means let's see let's go then wabc joe line three go ahead please what uh, hi you said someone should call you explaining why the terrorist from new york needs a lawyer oh wait hold on hold on i'm asking why a jewish lawyer would take his case Relevant that he's Jewish. What, what relevance is that? It's extremely relevant. In this radical Islam would like to destroy Jews. You understand that or not? No, he doesn't want to destroy Jews. Okay, look, if you're going to play stupid with me, I'm going to hang up. What do you mean they don't want to destroy Jews? It's encoded in their brain. Radical Muslims want to kill Christians and Jews. Do you understand that or not? No, I don't. Are you a Muslim or a Jew? I'm a Jew. Well, you're a stupid Jew. I'm a stupid I mean, you don't understand what radical Islam is? No, they want to destroy America, Western civilization, not, not, not necessarily Jews or Christians. Are you sure of that? Um, yeah, pretty sure. You're pretty sure. Have you read what their Quran says about Jews? Yes, I did. And it says if you see a Jew, what does it say about that? Embrace him or slay him? Slay him. He says what? Slay him. Well, come on, you're mumbling. Stop mumbling. You're not in a synagogue now. I asked you, do you know what the Quran says? Semitism? What do you do? Look, sir, I'd like to have a conversation with you, but you're not in a, in a synagogue right now. You're on a national radio program, so will you please stop mumbling for a second? Put the sponge cake aside for a minute. What does the Quran say? about Jews. Relevant that he's Jewish. No, you're not answering my question. Don't play smart guy with me. You just said that radical Muslims don't want to kill Jews and you're 100% wrong. 
<laughs> it's encoded. It's encoded in their holy book. So stop lying to yourself. And how any Jewish lawyer can represent a Muslim who just try to bomb uh, New York is is a mark of insanity to me. You really tried to bomb New Yorkers. That's irrelevant. Right, it is irrelevant. That's irrelevant. What's relevant is that this radical Muslim hates Jews. Well, he hates everybody. Someone has to represent him. No, he doesn't hate everybody. No, I'm sorry. He has a special hatred for Jews. Well, let's take the other case. Years ago, a Jewish lawyer from New York, who I can name but won't, represented American Nazis who uh, were in Skokie, Illinois, I believe, who had a rally, and they hated Jews, and they wanted to kill Jews. I thought that was absurd and stupid. What would you say about that? They also deserve a fair defense in our justice system. And what, what, again, you're mumbling. What did you get, a, a cheap phone on 47th Street? I'm One of your friends sold you a, a $9 throwaway phone? What did you get, a mafia phone for the garbage can? What did you just say? They deserve a fair defense in our justice system. Where did you study this, they deserve a fair defense? And this is basic, basic, basic civil. This is basic civil. It's basic suicide. No, it's basic suicide 101. Your your liberal thinking is what's going to kill you. Do you understand that? If you bend over backwards for your enemy, you know what that means. You're stupid. No, but how come they don't? How come they don't think you deserve a right to life? Prosecuted just with a fair defense. Why? Do you, why? Why should they have a fair defense when they're so vile? Why? Because everybody in America deserves a fair defense. It's a def why do they? Why do they deserve a fair defense when they're out to kill you? Tell me why. Because anybody could decide that someone doesn't deserve a fair defense in that case. Anybody could decide, like this person. Yeah, anyone could decide it, but in this case, it doesn't take much brains to figure out what they stand for when they print what they want to do. This guy will come along and say that in this case, it doesn't. You know, Joe. Joe, here, you're an example of the type that went into the ovens and didn't fight back because you think what the Nazis deserved a fair defense. I think everybody has to pros be prosecuted within a fear defense, within a fear legal. Are, are you a, are you a, are you a lawyer or a rabbi or both? I'm not a lawyer or a rabbi. I'm just a plain person. You know, you're pretty plain, that's for sure. But you're also a pacifist in your thinking, who doesn't understand that your own survival is at stake here, and that your liberal views may sound nice in a textbook when you read them, but when they're translated to the street. What you're doing is digging your own grave. Okay. Take that take that to the rabbi and talk with him about it. Ask a big rabbi in New York if I'm wrong. Ask him what he thinks about defending your enemy in a court of law. How wise that may be. It's unbelievable to me. John on WABC, you agree or disagree with that caller? Hey, uh, uh, Michael, uh, I'm a second-time caller. I love you. Uh, you you know, should love me. You should love me. I'm a national treasure. Yes. I don't know what I'd do without you. I'm telling you, man. I don't know what I would do without me either. <laughs> I'm, I'm 49, so, you know, I hope that uh, you last a long time because you make me laugh. I'm coming to, coming home from work, and it's just amazing every day uh, listening to you. Isn't life horrible? Life is horrible. Awful. It's dark out there, isn't it? Yeah, you got it's bleak, bleak, bleak. The mental landscape is so bleak; it's frightening. Yeah, you got people. So okay, so let's. What's the topic you're calling about? I'm calling about. You said you asked uh, the question: Who would? How could somebody bring themselves to take a case like that? And I think basically is uh, somebody has to sell their soul and their values and their beliefs and and do it for money. Uh, that's the only way I that is true the the American Jewish lawyer who represented the Nazis in the Skokie case did it strictly to gain a higher profile he didn't he didn't want to he didn't believe in it he hated them but he made believe he was a liberal even though he acts like that uh, in order to raise his profile and it did he became very famous as a result so he did sell his soul there's no question about it yeah that's my opinion purely my opinion so people some people, they, they may have a business that's failing, and they say, you know what, I'm just going to look the other way. I know this is the wrong thing. I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to try to take this case. All right. Well, that's right. Always follow the money. There's always a, a financial interest at stake. But, you know, Jim, get the soundbite of the Jewish lawyer yesterday. I think his name was Cohn, Con Cohn, who gave the speech yesterday uh, from the hospital or outside the hospital where the, where the bomber lay. You're not going to believe the double talk. It got me so upset.
that we'll get to the bottom and we'll find out who actually did this. The guy was burnt himself from the bomb, and the lawyers say we'll get to the bottom of who did it. Now, how in the world can that man be a lawyer? When we get to the bottom of what the man, uh, who did it? Why would he say a thing like that? It outraged me. All right, look, I'm sending you, I think you want God, faith, and reason. That's the only reason you called. I don't blame you. It's a good book. Stay on the line. We'll send you a copy. I'm not going to read from it today. I'm not in the mood. What day of the week is this already? Monday, Monday bombing. Tuesday, Alabama. Wednesday already, the doldrums. How am I going to get through Friday? Well, the only thing I'm going to look forward to today is the double talk for the rest of the day. From uh, those who backed more are going to say they didn't. I didn't back him. You thought I backed him. I pretended to back him, although for three months I licked his boots. Although I went there and I supported him and I talked about him and I was on the stage with him. It wasn't really me. It was a doppelganger. I was not really there. And though you shouldn't believe a word I say for one second, I know you do because you're a bunch of morons. That's going to be wonderful to watch tonight. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Are you doing a lot of holiday shopping from your mobile device? Really? Well, retailers expect 54% of holiday shoppers to visit their sites from mobile devices, and scammers see this as an opportunity to steal your credit card information and other personal data by distributing phony retail apps. Be very cautious and only download apps from reputable app stores, and please read the reviews for any complaints about malware. One in four people have experienced identity theft if you're only monitoring your credit. Your identity can still be stolen in ways you may not detect. Thieves could sell your information on the dark web or get an online payday loan in your name, right? A payday loan in your name, okay? LifeLock detects a wide range of identity threats. They're good. And if you have a problem, a U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to help you fix it. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But LifeLock can uncover threats that you might miss. So join now and get 10% off with promo code SAVAGE. That's right. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK or go to LifeLock.com. Use promo code SAVAGE and you're going to get 10% off. 1-800-LIFELOCK. So there are so many things that I want to talk about. They're blaming Steve Bannon for the loss. It's not Steve Bannon. It's the fact that uh, Roy Moore was hung by his own petard. He ran as a Christian conservative, and yet there were allegations of sexual improprieties swirling around him, rightly or wrongly, false or real, and people didn't want this hypocrisy in office. That's basically it. So don't draw any more conclusions from it than that. This is fundamentally a very, very religious conservative state, moreover, extremely conservative Christian state, and it's going to remain that way. So if the liberals are out to scream they want liberalism, they're, they're lying to you again. You know, their minds, you look at Rachel Mano, for example. Why is she beating Wallbanger? Why? Is that because she's so smart? Huh? Her brain is as tangled up as a, a liberal's tackle box, in her opinions. Her brain, in my opinion, is as tangled up as a liberal's tackle box, and yet she's beating Wallbanger. What does that say about him? You know, I tried to get Roy Moore on the show once in the last three months. You know, he would not come on the show. Do you know why? The cartel told him not to come on. Do you know that? You don't even understand what I'm saying to you. I never backed Roy Moore. I never had him on the show. The cartel backed him. Yeah, that's right. The, quote, conservative radio and TV cartel backed Roy Moore, and they told him, do not go on Savage's show. And as the months emerge in 2018, you're going to find out more and more about what this cartel has done to me and what they have done to destroy your mind and destroy America. You want to blame anybody for what's going on in this country? Blame the cartel for lying to you. Blame the cartel for their hypocrisy. Blame the cartel for lying right to your face about their values when they have none. They have no values. Their only value is greed and ascension of power. And if they steal the light of another man when they have all the light in the world, what does that tell you about them? It tells you that God is in charge and that vengeance is God's. God's. I've, I've lived that way my whole life. And I'm promising you that God is in charge and God sees the truth but waits. But in 2018, one of the major dominoes in the cartel will be found out for what he is. Not from me, but from, him, from his own actions. And you will see the mighty will fall. 
If you take another man's light, your light will be taken from you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 13th, 2017. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. In light of the Alabama election upset, which is based on the sex scandal, that's all it was based on. I don't know how you can argue it wasn't a repudiation of conservative prints. That's not the issue at all. It was the sex stuff. They dragged the hundred dollars through a couple of trailer parks. They drug up some uh, history there. Whether he did it or not is irrelevant. It's stuck, and that's what it is. And you know something you don't know about the African American community is very conservative in the South. Very religious, very Christian. You think it's all about Democrat, you're wrong. They didn't vote because they wanted communism or they want the corruption of the Democrat Party. They just don't want like a dirty person in office. You don't know that. So I'm asking you, the election's all about sex and scandal. It's not about conservative liberal. I mean, the morons on MSNBC may be saying, aha, this proves everyone wants communism. This proves, aha, everybody really wants communism. Everybody wants communism no it doesn't mean that at all it was about a sex scandal that's all it was so who are you going to blame i don't really care who you blame the country is consumed right now with blame who among you listening to this show you 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 in dallas you in new york you in san francisco you you crypto liberal you you crypto conservative fake liberal over there in san francisco who listens to me every day and then makes believe you don't listen to the show you let me ask you something. <clears throat> Who among you does not have a skeleton in their closet? Didn't Jesus say, as the prostitute Mary Magdalene was about to be stoned to death, let he among you who is without sin cast the first stone? That is where that saying came from. It was Jesus stepping in to save the life of the prostitute Mary Magdalene. Many of you don't even know that. You don't know that prostitution existed way back. It's the world's oldest profession. It preceded even politics. So the fact is, everyone has something they're hiding. Something that, if it was discovered, can turn into a gigantic scandal that will wreck their lives. Even if it's not true. And as I said to you from the beginning of this scandal-mongering in America, the cult of Jacques has now become a tsunami. And those that worship the God of accusation are bound to be destroyed by that which they and how they accuse. So, my friends... An election was just decided because of a sex scandal, and many people are blaming various people. Who do you blame? I don't care. I really don't care who you blame. Should prostitution be legalized? Yes or no? People are blaming. They're pointing fingers. They're getting vicious. They're blaming Steve Bannon. They're blaming Roy Moore. They're blaming everybody. But I've been thinking about it. In light of the Alabama election upset based on what? Sex scandals. This is the most sex-crazed nation God has ever created. It's around-the-clock sex madness. And it was sex that brought Roy Moore down. Make no mistake about it. It had nothing to do with conservative values, liberal values, which there are none. Nothing. Nothing to do with politics. It was all about sex scandals. So I was thinking about this. You want to talk about who to blame? I don't, don't call me on that. I don't really care who you blame. Everyone's blaming Steve Bannon, and they're blaming this one, and they're saying Trump is finished. It was about a sex scandal dredged up by the Washington Post, augmented by a psychotic lawyer who, in my opinion, should be disbarred and put in jail for 20 years. But in light of the Alabama election upset based on sex scandals, should prostitution be legalized is the question that's uh, plaguing me, and I'll tell you why. I realize this flies in the face of family values. I get that. 
But, you know, we've come a long way, baby, and this country is in real trouble because now if a man does what every man has been doing since Adam, which is look at women and want to be with women, which is what nature intended it to be, yes, that's the way it is. And no amount of psychotic feminists on earth are ever going to change man's nature. Never. So what do you want men to do with their testosterone and their desire for women? Sleep with other men? It ain't happening. So we're going to have to come to terms with the new America. You know, how many times have we talked about religion and Islam and that Christianity went through a reformation in the Middle Ages and as a result Christians are not violent? They don't kill in the name of religion anyway. While Islam has never gone through a reformation, and many of the practitioners of that religion still practice a fundamentalist form of that religion. And we've said there must be a reformation. Well, there must be a reformation in the moral codes of America as well. I realize that this is going to shock people in the evangelical movement. It's going to shock people in the orthodox Jewish movement. But, you know, lie to yourself, don't lie to me. I know what goes on behind closed doors. You're telling me that all of these high holy rollers don't engage uh, in uh, questionable practices in some cases? It's been gone on since the beginning of time. The only difference here is it's illegal and make-believe it doesn't happen. I want you to listen to talk radio on and off for the next day, particularly today. I want you to listen to the, the conservative blowhards who backed Roy Moore squirm as they lie to you. And I'm going to ask you, how do you feel about conservative blowhards who backed Roy Moore, who are now saying they didn't. You know, when I came into radio 24 years ago, I, I knew a man who owned 300 rock and roll stations. He was a lawyer who uh, ran the Kennedy White House. And he said to me, Michael, remember, when you set off on this road and talk radio, I know you're going to be a giant. I've heard you. You're going to be the best. He said, you have only one thing, and that is your credibility. Without it, you're going to be lost. There'll be nothing. I can say to you, with 100% certainty that I have my credibility today. I never backed Roy Moore. I wouldn't talk about Roy Moore. I was not interested in it. When I went on the Larry King show to discuss my book, God, Faith, and Reason, the first thing he tried to nail me with was, so let's talk about Roy Moore. I said, I don't live in Alabama. Can we go back to God, Faith, and Reason? I, well, you don't live in Alabama, but if you live there, would you vote for him? I said, can we talk about God, Faith, and Reason? I wouldn't be, tra I wouldn't be entrapped. So I maintain my credibility. I wouldn't be sucked into this swamp of Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore. Didn't discuss it. But there are those in conservative who bet their careers on it and lost. But what will the consequences be? Why nothing? They attacked Trump for a year straight, then they became Trumpers. After calling every one of you who voted for him Trumpers, Trumpeteers, Trumpettes, after calling those of us who supported Trump pom-pom girls they suddenly became bootlickers of donald trump trying to gain favor in the white house and what's happened to them nothing and so yeah i've always been an independent i've never been a republican never registered as one never worked for one and the fact of the matter is i'm still an independent talk show host i am a conservationist i'm an animal rights activist i have been from the beginning i'm a nutritionist i'm a homeopathist i'm an herbalist so what are you going to do, crucify me for knowing what's right and what's wrong? Well, that's your problem. Now, for those of you who think that my job is to be a bootlicker, you're mistaken. That is not the job of those of us in talk radio. Whether we are Democrats or Republicans, our job is not to sit here like a stooge, licking the boots of whoever is in power. In fact, it probably violates federal law. But I'll go into that another day. If you take your show and spend all day on your show promoting a single candidate, you're violating FCC rules, by the way. And I've never done it. I never will do it. I'm an independent voice in the radio business. That's how I've survived a quarter of a century. Now, I want to say something to you who you may not understand this. I consider myself, whether he considers it or not, I don't know. I consider myself a part of Donald Trump's radio cabinet that's an informal group of advisors remember uh, Ronald Reagan had a kitchen cabinet of unappointed individuals he was smart enough to call upon people in various walks of life who were smart to give their opinion on important matters and then he would make his own decision so I as a member of the media who is listened to 
to some extent. After all, Trump's war was number one on the New York Times list. How did that happen? It was a fluke. It was a mass movement. It was a mass movement, and I, like Moses, knew how to move the masses. I knew how to inspire you. I heard the roar of the masses, just as I hear the roar of God in my ears. I felt the irresistible roar of the listeners, and I harnessed that force. And with that force, I helped elect Donald Trump. You are America. And so I am speaking to you, America, who count upon me to be as honest as I can in my analysis. And if you don't like what I'm saying, I can't help it. This is my opinion. You see, we have to evolve in this country past this uh, idiocy of, of like, it's a, it's a duality, a fake duality of, you know, Victorian values that no longer exist, living in the past. I love the fools that were saying, this election proves that the Democrats have to help black people in the South. The black people in Alabama are very conservative. This was not about liberal versus conservative values. The black people who came out came out because they voted against the alleged immorality of one of the candidates. How many times do I have to say the same thing? I can't believe how, how vacuous people are in the media. They're, no one understands that. They think it's something else. You can spin it anything you want, but it's really about Christian values. The big issue is not um, African Americans or white Americans. The issue there was about scandal, sex scandal. That was the upset. The whole election to me should have been about something other than Roy Moore. It should have been about issues like immigration. I don't know if you understand that Jeff Sessions used to hold that seat. Jeff Sessions was the stalwart on the immigration issues in the, in the Senate. And then he went up to the attorney generalship and the seat opened up. But when uh, Sessions was the senator in that state, he won the vote by 97%. <laughs> it was a locked seat. The Alabamans, they don't want illegal immigrants in the country. That includes African Americans. That's this, another great big secret in this country. Most poor African Americans do not want illegal aliens in this country because the illegal aliens get more benefits than do the indigenous people who are in need, in plain English. So what, what can I say to you? I see the whole story here. It's, one, it's, my, it's my opinion. If I could talk about my book. I know many people are calling and saying they went into the bookstore at Barnes & Noble and moved my book from Christian Inspirational to where it belongs, which is bestsellers. I like that. And I do really want to talk about the big top. I mean, it's, it's close to the holidays already. Everyone's off next week and the week after. I think everyone's taking a two-week powder, right? I don't know. I heard everyone in talk radio is leaving for two weeks. I don't know what anyone else is doing. I'll be here most of next week. Then I'm threatening to be gone after that, although I've already changed vacation plans three times. First, I was going to go to L.A., cancel that. Then I was going to go to Florida, cancel that. Then L.A. came back up, and I canceled that. Then Florida came up again, and I canceled that. Because I came to the conclusion that I actually am happy where I am. And as miserable as I am in my own way, I realize life is hard wherever you are. So what's the point of going anywhere? If you have everything you need, if you, if you have everything you need and the air is clean, right, why go, why go anywhere? What do I need to travel for? I have a bed. I can have the same nightmares in my bed that I have in L.A. or Florida or Acapulco. Every night I go to sleep, I don't know what horror show is going to be playing between my ears. I look forward to it every night. I don't know which monsters are going to come up. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Take a minute, and here we go back on the Savage Nation, 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. We're talking about the Alabama election upset as the primary story. And remember, it was based on sexual scandalous allegations or scandalous sexual allegations, right or wrong. That's what did it. And I've asked, should prostitution be legalized or should women be forced to wear burqas? Of course, that's a sarcastic comment because you're not going to change men's natures in plain English. Whether Moore did it or not is irrelevant. He lost the election primarily 
because of this uh, issue, no other issue, no one's to blame but him. He, he was hung by his own petard, especially because he was a religious conservative. As such, he was seen as a hypocrite. <clears throat> and so they dumped him. They took the other side. Many people counted a voter who never would have voted to begin with. It was not about uh, liberal versus conservative. It was about Christian values here. And uh, no one's going to say that but me, but that's my analysis. Because Alabama's a very Christian conservative state. And, uh, and you look at the women and the black folks who came out and voted in large numbers. <clears throat> they were voting against his hypocrisy. That's how I see it. Not because he was a Republican. They didn't choose a Democrat because they liked Hillary Clinton or Charles Schumer or Nancy Pelosi. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, Pelosi hasn't said a word yet. I wonder what she's going to cook up now before the day is out. How come she hasn't uh, said anything yet? KSFO, Lane, go ahead. You have the air on the Savage Nation. Yeah, hey, Mike, great to talk to you. You know, you asked the question about what's going to happen with all this harassment stuff. And, uh, you know, it's basically, it's pornography. It's going to go crazy. In high schools already, we see high school boys not engaging into a lot of the risky behaviors that happened 20, 30 years ago because they're satisfied because they go to their phone, they go to their computers. Uh, after they do whatever they need to do to sort of, un, you know, unlock that drive toward females, they play some video game. They're feeding their mind through all of this virtual reality. We're going to see virtual reality. So, so it's the end. <clears throat> it's the end of families in America if this keeps up. Well, like you said, that's exactly what they're after. Is okay if intact families. Well, Elaine, I think this is a bigger question about the sexual issues in America, and I believe pornography needs to be outlawed in the country. I have for a long time. I think it's poisoned the minds of millions of people around the world, and someone's got to get on top of this filth. Because it is destroying not only the minds of people, it's destroying the relationships of people. It is derailing the ability for people to meet and have children. Well, and now we have these, the desire is there. And now if every time I make any sort of advance toward a female, it's harassment. I heard a number the other day, 25% of the population believes that complimenting somebody at work is harassment. Can you believe that? Start, uh, how do you meet? How do you meet a young woman? But say, gee, you look pretty. Can we go out on a date? Uh, this is as old as a, as an ice cream soda, and now ice cream soda, and now what? The radical feminist monsters who want to destroy all relationships between man and woman is saying that's harassment. How is that even possible for people to think that, Lane? It's crazy. And now you can. And I want. I have three kids, and I warn them that those. Oh, oh, what a time to raise children! My God. They've robbed our children of their childhood. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. <laughs> Look, everyone is speculating about who to blame for the Republicans blowing an easy win in Alabama. They're saying it's Roy Moore. The other predictable ones are saying it's the rhinos. You know, everyone's pointing fingers. Some are saying it's Bannon, and it's the Washington Post, that it's the lawyer. It's not about any of them. It's about sex and scandal. The country is consumed with this right now in every aspect of our lives. It's in entertainment. It's in news. It's in politics. On and on and on. But who among you does not have a skeleton in your own closet? And when will the scythe hit you? Didn't Jesus say, as the prostitute Mary Magdalene was about to be stoned to death, let he among you who is without sin cast the first stone? So I ask you who is to blame. Everyone has something that they are hiding. So I ask you again, the listeners, which one of these sinners cast the stones that decided an election? And the answer is the people of Alabama decided that he was a hypocrite whether they knew these allegations were true or false didn't matter at a certain point. What mattered was there were so many of them that they decided they didn't want anyone as tainted as him in office, and that was it. That's why they chose the Democrat, not because they chose Democrat politics. And I will remind you that Alabama is a very Christian, very conservative Christian state. So let me take your calls on this. KBOI, Linda, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Go ahead. Well, talk. Go ahead. Say something. Oh, good. 
gosh, well, I was waiting for you to ask a question, but I am from southern Alabama, born and raised, and I just want to say that you are right. You are absolutely right that the people of Alabama are conservative Christians, and they saw through this. Yes, that's what I just said. I know. Okay, I would like a book because I'm going to Barnes & Noble tomorrow. Oh, please, come on. It's only about a free book. Please. We need conversation, not conflagration. Dennis on WABC, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hey, Michael, yeah, I'm pulled over here waiting you with my golden retriever. I, I'm in Austin, and I just left Sing Sing Prison. I put in three phones for the new counselors. Like the well, what, are, you, are you a guard at Austin? No, I'm a telephone technician. <laughs> You're a telephone technician who just put in phones in Sing Sing. That's funny. So what's on your mind? Place is awesome. So women... What, uh, women, you, women are uh, dressing like that because they're competing with other women. They're not, you know, it's all about looking better than the other girl in the office. That's what my uh, lesbian girlfriend told So you don't think that women are dressing in that, uh, uh, with the, the, the attractive outfits for men, they're dressing for each other? Yeah, just to compete with other women. I don't know what the prize is, what they're competing for, but it's more of a competition. She was a lesbian for 10 years. She told me this, I believe. Her. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Who was a lesbian for 10 years? My, my girlfriend. Oh, now we're moving on to another topic. Well, anyway, that's what she told me about women. All right, so how's Sing Sing? What do you see inside Sing Sing with the phones? Oh, I was in. The, I was. I had to go down to the counselor's office. That place is built out of a rock. It's pretty interesting. It's some piece of history. All right. Well, I hope I can send you uh, and your lesbian ex-lesbian girlfriend a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. You can read it with each other. Maybe. <laughs> Does she believe in Christmas? Your girlfriend? Yeah. How, how do you become an ex? How, wait, how could you be an ex lesbian? How does that work? I don't know. That's like being an ex fireman or what? I don't. I don't understand it either. But she likes me. <laughs> well, wait a minute. What do you have? Wait a minute. What do you have that women don't have? Wait a minute. Let me ask it another way. What would make her leave women for you? What What makes you so special? Hmm, that's interesting. So I don't think she left the woman for me. She had been without women for a while before I met. Oh, so she had. Okay, that's too personal. I wish I could send you a free pair of eyeglasses, but I can't. But I, but I can send you a free, <laughs> a free copy of God, Faith, and Reason. So stay on the line. We're not giving away eyeglasses today. KSFO, Paul, Line Seven. You're up on the Savage Nation. Yeah, Professor Savage. Pleasure to talk to you. I thought uh, you might be interested in uh, in the way universities are even changing our young men. Um, I'd love I'd love to hear it. What's going on on the camp campuses today? It happened on my university just two weeks ago. A policy change that pets were allowed on campus, if you can believe it or not. And pets were allowed. Uh, well, right, right. Okay, so what do pets have to do with sexual harassment? Well, then the very next week I had a, I had a tenant who uh, asked me by email if he would, could have a pet in the house that I'm a landlord of, because uh, his therapist um, prescribed a pet for his... What, what was it, a pet zebra or a giraffe? Uh, a dog. A pet dog. Yeah. All right. There are therapy dogs. Okay. So you, you, if you said no, they would sue you. You know that. Um, but this is as if university, hardworking university students need more anxiety. But uh, in my opinion, so what is going to happen when all these people have uh, therapy pets on campus, and a boy dog runs after a girl dog and jumps on her? What's going to happen? They're going to sue the dog for harassment. I don't know. No, no, they're going to sue the man, the person who owned the boy dog for not controlling the impulses of the male dog, for not having sexually, not having constrained the dog sufficiently and retrained the dog with uh, proper therapy. Yep. But uh, maybe some, maybe these young men should learn how to talk to, uh, talk to young ladies rather than uh, have to take care of dogs. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a changing society. That's for sure. And it's going to the dogs. That's also for sure. And um, if you name it, you gain it. What book is it you want for free? How your voice has helped my own health over the years since you're playing. Well, I'm a, I'm a therapy host. Uh -huh. You you can you can consider me a, a therapy host. Uh, yes, in the old days, you got me fired up when I was driving uh, uh, driving home in a vehicle uh, for you know uh, afraid of falling asleep. You got me fired up, and nowadays in my in my older age, you helped with my insomnia problem, settling me down. Your voice is calming and soothing. I'm not going to tell you you're sexy like the lady the other day did, but um, <laughs> but rather, you know, uh, you, you, your confirmation. I know. She, three times she said I have a sexy voice. We had to call the police. I'm joking. 
<laughs> play, Mist, play Misty for me. No, it was, it was definitely a stalker call. I know that. <laughs> so, all right. Let me send you God, Faith, and Reason. That's a fun call. What else is on the phone? Oh, here's, here's a good caller. People are calling now. Prostitution, legalizing hookers. Mark on KSFO. I had suggested we ask the question, in light of the Alabama election, uh, based on the sex scandals, should prostitution be legalized? And I think Mark's calling on that question. Go ahead, please. Hey, Michael, how are you? I, uh, oh, my gosh, I need a therapy dog after uh, listening to some of your uh, your callers. Anyway, my... Um, I, need, I need a no-dose after the, some of the callers. Funny, funny stuff. Hey, uh, um, Michael, is, is that your first name? May I call you Michael? Why not? My mother called me that. Why not? Yeah. Making prostitution, outlawing prostitution, stupidest idea I've heard all week. How are you going to do that? How, how does that happen when it's, it's everywhere, uh, phones are everywhere, camera phones are everywhere? You're going to fill the prison with a bunch of people uh, uh, filming pros, uh, filming uh, uh, pornography? Well, I mean, you're mixing me up. I, what is your point? I don't follow it. You said we should outlaw pornography and yes. driving along. And I'm like, well, that's ridiculous. How, how are you going to do that? Pass a law making it illegal like it once was. Okay, so you've criminalized pornography, and well, no, you don't. You don't criminalize the people who are consuming pornography. You arrest the pornographers. You arrest the providers of pornography who are providing it. That's how you start. You know, some of the biggest purveyors of pornography are very conservative corporations. You know that or not? Some of the biggest purveyors of you mean like in advertising. If you go into, like, a certain hotel chain, which I'd rather not mention because they'll sue me, one of the biggest hotel chains in the country, which is owned by extremely religious people, one of their biggest profit centers is the porno, are the porno films that they sell in the hotel rooms, you know, pay-per-view. Uh-huh. So, you know, there's a lot of money involved, but there's a lot of damage involved. And I think this country once made, once pornography was once illegal in this country. Do you know that in, in, in the time I was a child, pornography was illegal? Did you know that? I, I mean, I assume it was, and they had that, that case of what was uh, pornography versus art and all right. that. The most vile man in the history of the of last century was Larry Flint in the minds of many. And he hired a shyster lawyer to go before the Supreme Court who argued that it was a First Amendment case, what had nothing to do with the First Amendment. It had to do with selling filth in every community in America and poisoning millions of people's minds forever. That's that's what happened there. So what I'm saying is what has been done can be undone. Laws are passed. Laws can be passed to change things. If you see, you pass the law thinking that liberalizing rules on possession of pornography would benefit society, and you find out the exact opposite happened, then you have to get some congressmen to start talking about legalizing, a rather... Um, delegitimizing pornography because of its uh, effects upon society and uh, banning it, making it illegal to manufacture or to uh, to manufacture or transmit. Forget the end user. Don't, don't criminalize the end user. Start with the source. Put them out of business. What would be wrong with that? Maybe people would discover the beauty of meeting each other again instead of having an imaginary relationship with an image. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. It's a thought. Just a thought. WDRC in Connecticut, Kent Line 3, you're up on the Savage Nation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Savage. Um, <clears throat> uh, I have a friend, my best friend, actually. Uh, she had in been interviewed for an uh, interview uh, with a uh, newscaster system here in Connecticut. And they told one of the parts of her interview is that we need to have you uh, form fitting for the interview and we also need you to be explicit as far as form fitting on the newscast and she wait so the company where she was going to be a newscast that told her she had to wear a form fitting dress yes yes okay so what what is your concern my concern is that um you know, uh, well, she told me, she says that they're looking basically for form-fitting women. She happens to be a beautiful lady, and she's, you know, a model type. Um, and she just she just declined it, and she ran, uh, ran out of there. And she says that 
go wrong. Well, you, I mean, there's always a saying, get thee to a nunnery. She could, I guess she could go work in a nunnery. Exactly. I, yeah. We live in a sex-crazed society. It's what sells everything. Sex is used to sell everything on earth. And yet, when people respond to it, they're called sexual predators. How is that going to, how does this continue? Uh, and that's why I say the society is going through a cataclysmic change. And we haven't yet seen the results of this change. The Roy Moore election was all about sex scandal, wasn't it? Yes. Isn't that what the lawyers made it about? Isn't that what the Washington Post made it about? They didn't make it about Roy Moore's values. They didn't make it about Roy Moore's positions on immigration or anything else. They made it about his background and his alleged background, that is, uh, with young girls. That's what they made it about. And as a result of that very successful smear campaign, whether it's true or false, they destroyed him and uh, the opposition was elected. It's not that people chose the other guy. It's that they chose not to vote for Roy Moore, not that they wanted the other guy. This is a very Christian, very conservative state. That's my, that's my position on that, on that issue. Now, again, we're talking about what happened in Alabama and the finger pointing and the blame. And I'm saying that there's no people to blame. That's absurd to blame Steve Bannon or to blame rhinos. That's stupid, you know, idiotic thought 101. The person to blame is Roy Moore himself. That's number one. And number two, the results speak for themselves. They said, no, we don't want a guy with these allegations around him in office. That's what they said. Forget the future ramifications with regard to to a higher office. I know what you're going to thinking because you've been told this already for three, four days now. Like It's like a, Albert Einstein figured it out. Four weeks ago, I told you it was all leading to Donald Trump. Four weeks ago, I told you all of this is that they're throwing them aside on their own sites and they could say, see how fair we are. I know where they're going with it. Now already, everyone's an Einstein now. They all figured it out. Well, okay. As the original Einstein on the subject, let me tell you this. There's something else happened in Alabama and that something else is that Christian values were actually upheld in Alabama. By rejecting more, the very conservative voters upheld Christian values. Do you know that? No, but that's what happened. Now you understand why I'm not heard on Fox News. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. All right, the show's almost over. Just two more minutes. I got time for one or two calls. You won't believe how fast the time is going here on the uh, Savage Nation. David on KSFO, line eight, fire away, 60 seconds or less. Michael Savage, your book, God of Faith and Reason, is awesome. I feel like I'm reading, uh, having a conversation with somebody about you about God. It's not like any books I've read of yours, fiction or political. It's fantastic. I just want to let you know that. It's a great read. I read about 75 pages of it. And thank you so much for what you do, my friend. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you, David. See, someone someone out there reads a book. Line two, Allison, KSFO. What's on your mind, Allison? Hello, hello. I'm so happy that you're talking about pornography because I think it's what's ruining the whole world. I've been waiting for somebody. Uh, you know, the, ever since Weiner Weinstein and his issues, nobody wanted to bring up pornography. Nobody wanted to talk about that issue. And I've been trying to call people and say, it's pornography is ruining our lives and oh. well most of hollywood is is pornography most of the movies are pornography softcore pornography at that but the violence is pornographic the sex is pornographic they made their fortune off pornography and so when you see actors or actresses basically they're all pornographers only they're in softcore porn not hardcore porn but that's not the issue the issue is men and women relations and how can they go on with pornography so rampant when high school students and even younger are walking around with iPhones where they can look at things that God himself can only imagine. How are they ever going to be able to meet a girl or a, bo a girl meet a boy and have a relationship? It's impossible. It is decoupling the, the, the society, decoupling the people from each other, Allison, and someone has to do something about it. Thank you. I'm sending you God, faith, and reason staying alive. So I said should, in light of the Alabama election, based on sex scandal, should prostitution be legalized? Here's some of the best answers on my Twitter feed. 
He said, uh, based on your logic, Chicago should legalize murder to solve their problem. <laughs> Chris Heinberg, you're a logician and a magician. And you said, in light of all the drug abuse, should drugs be legalized? Bad solution, doctor. So you see that? People do listen to the show. They do think. There are very logical people out there who have great answers. Unfortunately, none of them are in Washington, where apparently prostitution was legalized with the founding of the nation. This is the Savage Nation. Visit me at michaelsavage.com and check out God, Faith, and Reason in a bookstore near you. It's the greatest Christmas gift you can give. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.